And uh, just to be start, uh, I would like to spend some uh, time on the question uh, or the topic. Uh, and I would like to ask you to introduce yourself, your organization, and just a few words about you and your uh, story. And uh, let's start uh, with Matt. Hey, Matt. Hi, Dimitri. Thanks for the, uh, the introduction. Um, my name is Matt Cobby, and I recently started working for Deloitte as a director of engineering for their modern systems engineering um, team. Um, before that, though, where a lot of my experience comes from is I spent a number of years working for a major Australian bank where we introduced Inner Source um, to the teams and we made it a core part of our um, engineering foundations. So, um, and then I think from there, what we've done is we've learned a lot of uh, the experiences there about how to work within the governance and regulated framework, and we hope to share that today. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Uh, Daniel? Hey, hi, everyone. This is this is Daniel Izquierdo. Um, <clears throat> I've been involved at the Inners of Commons since 2016, approximately. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm currently the CEO of Viterdia. We are a small startup in Spain doing software development analytics. So. Our field of expertise is metrics for open source and inner source projects and analytics and how to make the most of them. Um, for today, I'd like to share uh, our experiences during the last years talking either at the inner source commons with uh, large corporations and medium sized companies about this topic, metrics. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. And Swapnil. Hello, uh, good afternoon, morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Swapnil Gulkarni. And I'm currently working at Nuance Communications uh, in their cloud COE division as a principal cloud architect. Prior to that, I have worked in different product and service-based companies, and I am an active open source contributor. I have contributed to projects like OpenStack, Kubernetes, and some of the cloud computing projects. Uh, and basically coming to inner source, so I have uh, learned about inner source very recently and gone through some of the courses and that's why i got to know about inner source and it because my experience in inner source uh, with open source i basically find it very familiar while working with inner source communities uh, at nuance is it's basically a healthcare company uh, and basically specializes in uh, telecommunications financial services as well and uh, uh, we are basically practicing inner source for a few years and i'm here basically to share how we are, we are doing it and our observations from that. Yeah, thank you guys for your introduction. And uh, so a little notice that uh, if you will have any questions you want to uh, put into the conversation inside panel discussion, uh, just write in the chat your question and we will raise it after afterwards. And so I will start from the first question and uh, let's see uh, where uh, our end destination of this discussion. And I will start uh, from return on investment question actually, but uh, feel free to put anything in the chat and uh, we'll discuss it too. So, and the first question what I've created uh, in my notes, um, so what was the return on investment argument that got your organizations uh, to invest to the inner source to begin with uh, this uh, this activity. Any volunteer to answer? Daniel, Daniel. Yeah. Sure. Uh, maybe I can start. Uh, Go ahead. Yep. Uh, so basically, uh, if I if you look at the current scenario, right, every organization, uh, irrespective of whether their software or not right they want to have the, tra the transformation journey the modernization journey that they're looking at and moving to cloud irrespective of whether it's product services or whatever and the crux of it is basically uh, the processes that are there right tooling and everything that you need to change and anything that can help you with the shared platform or requirements is a boost for them if you look at the open source ecosystem right over the years it has shown that uh, you can have effective collaboration among diverse teams across the globe, right? And they achieve a common goals very effectively. And within Neons, it was the same goals to bust the silos, right? So with uh, products that are in different lines of business, right? If they can have 
uh, of the shelf shareable modules that can be used across uh, for implementations right and set of common activities procedures that we can share from a common portal right that was the uh, argument that we had and it was basically driven from a survey that we did around couple of years from the uh, people within yons and that got to this right that we need to have that and that was the roi argument that we had yeah yeah that's that's indeed a, a very good point if we if we extend this definition of inner source and we go to the roots of what this means the idea or the goal is to break down silos right so uh, the promises or the benefits of all of this is about breaking down silos which is fostering collaboration reusing the software discovering and finding existing software across the different geographical regions which is uh, what you mentioned and but then at the same time it's about empowering developers to make decisions to be more aligned to the business decisions so then developers can collaborate uh, with, with other developers, removing, let's say, uh, hierarchies if possible. So then we allow that, uh, that process. If we think about engineers specifically, and now talking about uh, not, not upper management, but developers, um, developers like to solve problems. Um, my background is computer science, and I like you know, to code, to, to do things. Um, and, and the point here is that if if I have more of my time doing things, solving things, than dealing with hierarchies and bureaucracy and all of this, then I would be happier. And this links to the concept of return of investment through the point of uh, the talent war that we can see that is out there, at least in IT. Uh, you know, this is this is this could be seen from the from the uh, human resources or people point of view as a way to have a higher engagement. So engagement, I would say, is one of the benefits that we can see this as well. Yeah. And Daniel, I do like to think about the, the developer experience, you know, having happier developers. It is, it, it's, a, it's a huge multiplier effect in your organization. It's not something that often gets a lot of uh, um, sight sometimes from the executive leadership, but it's something which is immensely powerful for so many reasons in terms of the basic productivity or your ability to attract and retain engineers. I think for us, it was um, it, it was very different. Um, we didn't have a return investment argument to start with. We didn't have an initiative that was launched for in a source. Um, we were solving problems that we had in our organization that led me to in a source commons and a lot of the work there that we picked up and used. Um, you know, we had, you know, we often talked, I've talked about before, our, our origin story is one of a tool that didn't work very well. And then I tried to find another one to use and there were 20 different versions of the same tool. We had those silos that, you know, Daniel was talking about, which we're trying to remove. Um, and so we, we worked with that and then we kind of took those principles and uh, uh, worked with our enterprise container images, our base images, and put those into an in-source model. And then we found another team that was developing uh, APIs using Python and Lambda, and they built this wonderful library that solved a lot of the problems you get from, you know, trying to implement a state-based system in, in Lambda, and you know a lot of the connectivity issues. And they had a really good product to use. But the reality was, you know, working inside the bank, it's very much more black or white. Um, it's very much about uh, is it going to be cheaper for me? Is it going to be faster for me? The thing about breaking down silos is it's not such a, an argument. And inner source initially was seen to be, uh, was seen with suspicion. Um, it wasn't aligned to business value. So we had a great, we had quite a lot of trouble there to get it moving. And it wasn't until we started building our official engineering products, which were highly opinionated, um, that we started to get, we get some of that sanction and return on investment there. Um, because what the executive leadership wanted our teams to use these products, but because they were highly opinionated, they often didn't meet the needs of other teams. So the best way to get these products to adapt and flex to the teams of their consumers and to help teams on board was for them to submit uh, feature requests in and to use the inner source model to get the features they required in. And once they got those killer features in that they needed, um, they started using them. So our, our kind of return investment was things like pull requests, which is a crude metric because it's just based on work. It's not actually value. And then, um, so it worked to a point, but then we had to have conversations with each and every product owner 
to say what are the valuable contributions you've received this month and therefore we could talk about business value yeah but that indeed. was a very manual process indeed indeed I, i'd like to to highlight here that we've we've discussed about different things uh, so uh what inner source means or the benefits of inner source depends heavily on the industry perhaps and then on each of the corporations and would like to go in the in the near future so inner source journey may mean in some cases about uh, uh, reusability but in some other cases it's about engagement or in, in some other cases it's about uh, even outside marketing like hey we are a cool company we are doing this so please come to our company so then you you will work as as you'd like to to work right like in the open or so but within the walls of the of the corporation because th there is there is one question in the chat we'll go through it later but uh, there is uh, half organizations developing with inner source experience moving from pure inner source to hybrid mix of inner and open source well this this mainly depends on the um, our experience so we are a small company and we are helping large corporations and medium size into you know gaining visibility and highlights about the way they are developing software um and because of that uh uh what what i can say is that depending on the on the goals of that organization the, in the short term then this is this is what inner source means for them and and we've seen at the inner source commons cases coming from innovation coming from engineering uh coming from upper management or coming from the roots and and that's really really great because there are different or different departments and different people either upper management or developers that are willing to to change the way they are working and that's 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 great yeah and we touched slightly the topic uh, why engineers uh, should be interested in inner source because they want to try something new or they engineers actually and uh, after they want to solve engineering problems and uh, we already talked about product quality and we talked uh, and the term raised uh, twice i think uh, the silos breaking silos and uh, the question actually how measure the uh, is there silence uh, silos are broken or not uh, or rephrasing the biology's question what metrics uh, do you have to convince stakeholders So, uh, I'm 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 not sure if I'm interrupting someone, but uh, just to put the same context right, engagement is basically the key, and that can be between the engineers or between the management and everything, right? So how you show what's being done, and when you talk about whether the silos have been busted or not, it's a incremental process, right? Based on how uh, uh, deep you are. Uh, stack is and what all things you want to change right from that it de depends on that and you can basically see the incremental journey or maybe a big bang approach whichever you choose right based on that you will see how it has been busted but the uh, once you start engaging with different teams with different people from uh, and get different ideas right you will see how you can use the uh, opportunity to reuse the code from different places right or how you can consolidate different engineering activities that are there. Uh, for example, using the similar tools or using the similar pipelines and everything. I think that can be the way you can look at how they have been busted. And the standard the metrics that we see, right? How many pull requests and how many new contributors you are having, right? That is the standard metrics that you can use. But how many new communities that you are building or how many new models or patterns that you are getting it working right uh, is the metric that you can kind of look at. Good to hear, Matt. Yeah, um, it's somewhat similar. The, the whole breaking silos wasn't one of our initial major um, reasons for doing it. it uh, we did measuring success. We'd look at, we did look at number of engineers collaborating in the source. So we'd often refer to um, at our GitHub um, our in GitHub Enterprise, we look at how many people were in that organization, or how many people were submitting uh, pull requests to other inner source products um, that were in GitHub. We'd also um, a lot of our metrics were based on consumption, so we'd look for depending on the different types of products, um, you'd have different ways of reporting it. So if it was a library, 
We do dependency scanning across all the repositories in GitHub, looking for new applications. Um, if it was a binary artifact to type a product, then we'd scan the logs of our artifact management system and look for downloads. So, you know, typically you might see 160,000 downloads for a container per month. Or a given library, we'd see, we would track about four, uh, 400, 450 applications using that li library. And then we'd put a, um, a time and materials cost to that. So we'd actually put a financial cost to develop that product. And then we look at how many times that product was being reused, which is a form of cost avoidance. Um, so if every team had to come to the same level of quality, you'd have to reinvest that multiple times over. So we took very much a kind of material, um, time and materials, look at it, financial cost and number of engineers collaborating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I, I'd like perhaps to, to bring, uh, 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 to have a broader perspective here um, and think about the many hats of the people involved in inner source at any corporation. So if we have to do uh, uh, upper management reporting, then we can think of all of the all of the metrics that you already mentioned, right? Like, uh, well, specifically business return of investment, reusability. So, how many times have, are, are we using the same piece of software, or, or collaboration? Because we are we want to break down silos, and and this is really useful to see. Hey, we have a successful, um, you know, inner source program office or inner source initiative for journey. Um, but but then, what if if we think again about developers? From a development perspective, uh, success may mean a, a different thing, right? So, from the development perspective, one of the things that, or one of the benefits of inner source, is about having more eyes in uh, on the source code because there is a code review process. We are slightly changing the processes. We are formalizing some of the existing processes that, that we have in the in the corporation. Um, and from that perspective, if the stakeholders of the metrics are developers. And this is this might be a way to convince not leaders but developers as, as well. Then we can think of time to you know merge, review, close again the collaboration and so on. And having all of this in place and convincing developers is part probably of the inner source journey because this will be good. And we can show this to upper management again. So um, what I'd like to to bring here perhaps to the discussion is um, we need like a method to to deal with with all of these metrics um, and and try to structure all of this information that we may have on, on our minds because if we ask everyone here in the call what is your the most important metric for you probably we have like 20 different metrics right uh, but the, the question that we are all trying to achieve or look for is what are the goals that your uh, corporation is looking for so then we go to the to the initial discussion right that we had we, we were discussing about you know, a reusability or, or time to market or, or development velocity and some other things. Or maybe even just we need to reduce the budget we have for, for IT or to be more efficient. So if we think about the goals, uh, what, 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 we are, what we do when we discuss with, with people is about, uh, well, we are following this method of the goal question metric approach. So we are trying, you know, to divide and conquer the problem and then if we think about the goals that we have in the corporation then we can go to the next level which is now we can split those into different questions and then we can discuss about the metrics with with this in mind the what we've seen in the past is that there are there are companies that they are they have certain metrics to measure success in their inner source journey because they can from a tech point of view they can do it but perhaps they have not considered the whole spectrum of metrics that is out there and that's pretty important as well because there might be metrics that we cannot even you know uh, uh, have because we, we 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 cannot track them but at least we are aware that that we need them somehow and 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 if we have this goal question metric approach uh this this is basically by the way uh, uh, an all academic paper uh but the, but the idea of this is if there are changes or there is an evolution in the in the goals, in the business goals or cultural goals that we have in the corporation, then we can we can think of new goals. So then our structure, our hierarchy of question and metrics will be slightly different, right? So then there are two important things I would say in this discussion. First, your business goals or cultural goals that you are trying to achieve, and then have 
something that allows you to have like a lake of data or, or, or a lake of metrics that you can go and fish for the, for the ones that you need afterwards. So the thing in between is something that we need to keep evolving over time and over time. Going to the question itself, and then I'm, I'm, I'm giving the token to the next one. Uh, what I would say is that uh, the, the most or the, the, inici the initial metrics that we see is, are basically about related to collaboration and, and related to reusability of the software. So those are the two ones that we see. If we start with those, that those are good ones to prove value and that the things are evolving as expected. Yeah, I'd love to hear as well. Sorry, um, anyone's got any other ideas about that collaboration aspect? Because, you know, um, what I was was very black and white about our approach to metrics. But one of the best benefits I think I personally found mm -hmm. was the mentoring and cross skilling I saw between engineers. You know, we'd run a, a hackathon on based on inner source and introducing people to it. And it was amazing to see, you know, senior engineers sitting with the interns and they'd be learning software engineering practices or, you know, the interns would be sitting there with all these new ideas and that, you know, perhaps the, the old engineer had forgotten about some of the passion. And so there's all these different for fertilization of ideas and community building. I have no idea how to measure that or to show the, the return on investment for that. Um, but I would love to hear from anyone who does that as well. So we have a good amount of questions in the chat and uh, I have uh, an idea in my mind that uh, maybe someone uh, from the panelists wants to summarize what uh, was uh, said uh, during this conversation and we'll run a conversation between all of our participants today. Any volunteer? Daniel, Daniel, Matt? Yeah, I can try and do the sum summary, but uh, uh, I'll do my best. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I think probably for, for me, this, this is the panel discussions are interesting because it's, um, I get I get to learn as well. Like, I get to hear some of these conversations and views from Swap and Daniel that I, I haven't, generally we don't have day to day. Um, and what's really struck me, and my, my personal takeaway would be that different companies have different objectives. They have different cultures and different places. They have different goals. And those um, metrics very much are going to be around, um, the, the, the goal. The metrics are going to be driven by your goals. So everyone has different levels of goals they have to worry about. I think those metrics fall into two camps, the reuse of inner source and the collaboration of different people across silos. Do you think that's fair, Daniel? Absolutely. <laughs> That was perfect. Good. Oh, yeah. All right. So, what's up, Neil? No, yeah, I agree with you. So, <laughs> I think uh, it, it, it is based on goals and then uh, how you want to kind of tackle those, right? So, but the crux is basically to have that engagement model and best utilize it to the objectives. Yeah. And it can differ from place to place. Yes. Totally, and, and perhaps just as a, as a last addition here is I'm perhaps going to the to the question of Matt about how to measure certain things. Uh, not not everything is quantitative, but we can simply ask developers. And I remember uh, I remember from some inner source commons in the past that people were doing surveys across the people working in a more you know open and collaborative environment, asking for their perception, just perception, just in case if they you know are you. Uh, are you happier? Do you feel more comfortable now? Are you uh, do you feel empowered and so on? And 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 that's and the results were pretty cool. So people were basically happier. Yeah. So on this uh, this uh, mood, I think we can uh, say thank you all. Thank you, Matt, Swabnil, Daniel, for this short, but I'm sure that it was really productive conversation. This is the end of our panel session part. And uh, yeah, as a, a, and a quick reminder to everyone here uh, and anyone who may uh, be looking at this after the fact that you can find out about our next community calls and other events at our website uh, in the events page.